the world. <laughs> okay, so I want to welcome everyone to this um, evening or morning or afternoon's um, webinar, depending on where you are across the globe. My name is Dr. Mio Suri Makinde, and I'm the founder of Lifestyle Champions International. And we have webinars every other month um, as um, time permits for us to be able to bring to you important information about your lifestyle, what you can do to maintain a good health related quality of life without having to depend on a pill or without having to visit the hospital every now and then. It's important for us to know that lifestyle champions are people who champion their day with healthy habits. You have choices to make on a daily basis, choices that have to do with your meals, that have to do with your relationships, your drinks, your sleep, and all these have an impact on your health. So we're going to be looking at something very interesting today. Um, in the past um, one year, we've had different webinars. Um, we had a webinar that talked about healthy eating. We had a, another one that talked about um, osteoarthritis, arthritis and the different types um, um, of arthritis and how we can prevent or manage them without depending on medication. And today we're going to be looking at the topic, the influence of lifestyle choices on your eye health. And um, with me, I have um, a dear friend and colleague. Um, he's an ophthalmologist by profession. I'm going to read his bio shortly. Uh, and he's with us, even though he's um, out of the country, but thank God for um, technology, thank God for innovation. So he's going to be speaking with us this morning or this afternoon or evening. So I really want to thank everyone for joining the call earlier. Um, I can see that we have um, people introducing themselves. So let me just see, we have um, Dabota Bowari from uh, Portacot, Nigeria. We have Taiwo from Nigeria. We have... Um, Nick, Nick Line from Nairobi, Kenya, you're welcome. We have a BME from Abel Kuta. Um, we would like to request that everyone else introduce themselves as well on the chat box um, function. We'll be recognizing each and every one of us from time to time. I can still see a number of people also um, in the participant box. So I really want to thank you. I've been Bola from Canada. Thank you for coming. Because we don't have so much time, we want to go straight into the webinar. And um, I want to read out the bio for, for um, our speaker. Okay, just give me a minute to bring this up. Okay, we have um, Dan Juma from Lagos. We have Jay from Ghana. We have Oye Dinkpe from Lagos. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Okay, so I'm introducing Dr. Oluwa Femi Ibrahim. Dr. Oluwa Femi Ibrahim is a board certified ophthalmologist. He's currently an associate prof at Orota College of Medicine and Health Sciences in Asmara, and is a consultant to the National Eye Referral Hospital, Asmara. He has special interest in public eye health, retina diseases, health system strengthening, and more recently, lifestyle medicine. I was actually at um, a webinar where he made a presentation on lifestyle medicine um, for his um, school mates or his school class way back, you know, in those days. 
um, fondly known as Dr. Femi. He's married to Temi Tokwe and he's blessed with three children. Um, we attended school together in the University of Ibadan and the University College Hospital. And um, he's been a friend and, and a colleague indeed. So thank you so much um, for your attention so far. So I'm going to give it um, to him, the mic, the microphone. I'm going to give it over to Dr. Femi Ibrahim as he speaks to us this evening about our lifestyle and our eye health. So as we go along, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat box. I have some questions already that came in and I think I forwarded those ones to Dr. Ibrahim. So we'll have enough time to answer all our questions. Sit tight and enjoy the webinar. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Good evening, and thank you for joining this webinar. I want to appreciate my friend and colleague, Ori, uh, for inviting me and discussing this with me uh, and making it possible to do this. Uh, so thank you all for joining. Um, we are going to discuss about lifestyle choices and eye health, what we do, our behaviors, and uh, how we live, how it affects our hair health. I am going to talk about this generally, and then specifically, I'm going to look at how you can prolong your vision uh, till your old age, what you need to do, what you need to avoid. Okay. Okay. So vision, like you all know, plays a very critical role in every facet and stages of our life. We need vision to our vision to communicate, our vision to understand what is happening around us. For children, when children are born, when there's uh, uh, their vision is not too good, it affects other developmental milestone and growth, actually. And the it's one of the domin most dominant of our senses how we interact with our environment and with um, exploring the world where we are in if we take it for granted it means it will affect how we live how we read how we participate whether in school or at work overall it will affect the quality of life of the particular individual that have issues um, with each of our vision and our lifestyle actually affects um, our vision, um, what we eat, what we do, and what we indulge in. And there are some high diseases that can be prevented or more or less the risk lowered by what we, by our lifestyle and behavioral changes. And sometimes by screening, especially when people have um, genetic diseases uh, like glaucoma and other things that runs in particular families, which can be prevented if we seek help on time. So some tips for good at health includes regular eye checkup. This is something we emphasize over and over again, that at least uh, once a year, you should check your eyes. This is more mandatory for people when they are 35 and above. So at least once a year, even if you don't have any complaint, everything is fine. It's important for you to do a regular eye checkup. The other thing is proper lighting. A lot of times, the lighting that people used to study or read affects their vision. Sometimes people have to squint. Sometimes even with the devices that a lot of people use these days, the people have to brighten the devices. And there are rays of light that comes from most of these devices we use that can give us uh, problems in our eyes. And it's also important to look at eating a healthy diet. This is something I discovered while I was doing all this lifestyle medicine, that there are actually some high healthy diets that we need to consume that will help us in protecting our visions. Most of these diets, we'll talk about them in details as we go on, contains a lot of antioxidants that helps in taking care of tissues that are in the eye that can be affected when, um, the, um, there is paucity of these antioxidants in our diet. 
It's also important for us to wear sunglasses on sunny days. For uh, most of us that are in Nigeria or even in other parts of the world, we have the sunlight. The sunlight actually can create damage to the retina, to the lens, and can result in different disease pathology. And sunlight has actually been implicated in a lot of pathogenesis of some eye diseases. And putting on, you know, in Nigeria, when people use sunshade um, or sunglasses, it's a form of uh, trying to show off. And we see some of our entertainers even wearing these at night. But during the day when you wear sunshade, um, it's actually help, it's helpful. And for those who use those glasses, it's important that um, photochromic or um, um, light protecting tint is put in your spectacles because this is actually will give you some protection. And it's important for us to blink frequently. Dry eyes is a big problem that people have. Um, this is as a result of many uh, factors. A lot of people use air condition and this blew directly to their face, makes the eyes dry and create a lot of problems. And it's important for us to do um, eye exercises. Now, I, I put this slide here because things have changed now. A lot of times people are doing a lot of video meetings, a lot of Zooming, a lot of teaming online or online learning and screen and, and schooling. And people are coming down with a lot of high problems. Uh, especially what we call computer vision syndrome. And a way out is you need to read, use your screen for 20 minutes, take a 20 seconds break, look at an object that is far off and look for 20 seconds, what we call the 2020 rule. And this helps to reduce strain on your eyes. I'm sure um, for those of us that have been in, uh, when there was complete lockdown and how to be in online meetings, there were a lot of high complaints. People have headaches, pain, redness, dryness, and a lot of discomfort in the eye. And this is as a result of this eye strain. So more of the time I'm going to spend in this presentation is on age proving your vision. Age proving your vision. We're going to um, look at something because aging is part of life. Uh, when myself and Ori were in the medical school and did house job, uh, together then, you know, all everybody was aspiring for different things and then we went at different ways, but things have changed. We become younger. I always say that I'm younger uh, than I was before. And when people ask me how old I am, I say, um, I'm, I'm very young. I've just started life. And they will laugh, you started life. I said, yes, I just started life. Uh, so we need to know that the effect of aging is not about the wrinkles the gray hair, the creaky knees. It also affects the eyes. And there are many age-related conditions that occur in the eyes. Common one, I'm sure you might have heard or somebody, a relative might have heard is cataract, uh, which is the commonest cause of blindness all over the world. We also have age-related macular degeneration, which affects the macula where the eye sees very well. So there's a degeneration that occur. For this particular disease, inflammation, as well as sunlight, and been implicated as um, uh, the cause of this. And then you have glaucoma, which is also a common cause of blindness all over the world. Most of the time it is hereditary, it is genetic, but there's some lifestyle changes you can be involved in that can reduce the risk, or if the person have glaucoma, might help to reduce the intraocular pressure. Okay, so what do we do? Because I want to give more time for questions and interaction because or convener had mentioned that a lot of people have brought um, different um, queries up. You need to maintain a healthy weight. This is very, very important. Being overweight has been found to affect the vision. Now, most of the time when we talk about being overweight, people look at heart problem, blood pressure, diabetes, and other things. But well, studies have found out that people that are overweight and obese, they are more likely to develop cataract than those who weigh less. So it's important you keep a tab on your weight. Um, the normal BMI is expected that's between 19 to 24.9. And if you are more than 24.9, 25 and above, you're obese. 
And to calculate the, um, your body mass index, usually you need to measure your weight in kilogram divided by your height in meters squared. And that will give you um, a raw number, which you can then use. If you are not sure about it, please, we can communicate with Dr. Ori. She's an expert in that area. She will be able to guide you appropriately. Well, it's important. So if you are overweight, and this is um, a common thing in Nigeria, a lot of people are overweight and most part of the world, we do a lot of sedentary work. Uh, we sit in our offices. We sit a lot when we get home in the evening, watching the TV, and this makes us to have a lot of weight. Now, however, when people lose weight, the cascade of event that has been set up to develop cataract cannot be reversed. So it is something preventable if you can lose weight. So maintaining a healthy weight also helps um, to reduce the risk of glaucoma. Um, I've tried to put the reason on that. I'm sure this recordings will be shared with us later because there's increased body fluid in the body and this can increase blood pressure, diabetes, all these things also affect glaucoma to an extent. And then people that develop age-related macular degeneration, it's found that obese people are at more risk of developing this. So apart from obesity affecting blood pressure, the heart causing stroke, it can also lead to um, blindness in people's eyes. Also, it's important for us to enjoy regular activity. This, um, in a study done over 15,000 people, they found people that are physically active and that drink alcohol occasionally, they experience less vision over 20 years compared with those who don't exercise or drink at all. Okay, now this had created a lot of uh, problems, but many studies found it, uh, especially for alcohol, because people take me on this, especially when I talk about alcohol. And it's because moderate alcohol, moderate alcohol drinking has been found to increase the good cholesterol in the body, which is protective. And um, but it's important to discuss with your doctor to know whether it is appropriate for you or not. Now, if you are not smoking, congratulations, don't start. If you are already smoking, it's good for you to go for, do all that is necessary for you to lose, to stop smoking because Smokers, whether current or former, they have a four times risk of developing age-related macular degeneration and also to have attract compared with those who don't smoke. And even after people stop, this risk is still high, even up to 20 years. I talked about sunglasses. This is just to emphasize you can prevent cataract, you can prevent development of age-related macular degeneration when you use this sunshade. Um, I know when I was growing up, people always talk about people wearing sunshade as recommended, is not recommended, is recommended, and all the all the stuff about that. But it is good. And in Nigeria, the intensity of the sunlight we have is huge. Even those that live in temperate region, the reflection of light from the ice can also create damage to the eyes. So sleep on your sunshade um, when you have the sunlight. You're protecting yourself and preserving your eyes. But it's important that you should check that the sunglasses can protect against ultraviolet radiation A and B wavelength, and that it goes around your eyes. You know, sometimes when people wear, um, like the glasses I'm wearing, it goes around very well. So yeah, you, you can be better protected. And it's important to eat healthy diet. Um, this is something sometimes people overlook. Your diet makes, you, so to say. And if we eat diet that are rich in deep, dark, leafy green uh, are very important because they contain a lot of um, antioxidants that are in the macula. And the macula is the area where we see best in our eyes, the lutein and the zeantine. Um, there are a lot of it in the dark, leafy green. And then eating diet rich in omega-3 fatty acid. And this you find in a lot of fish like salmon, mackerel, tuna, the nuts generally. You see a lot of omega-3 fatty acid in the nuts. Um, and then also when you eat diet rich in beta carotenoids like carrot, banana, and papaya, all these also are high healthy diet. So this slide is just to show the high healthy diet. And I've tried to put the particular nutrients that are um, helpful for the eyes. These nutrients, lutein, zeantine, omega-3 fatty acid, vitamin A, vitamin C, 
vitamin E and zinc. They are the nutrients that are in these different foods. And I've tried to highlight those foods that are common in Nigeria. I'm sure for those who are in Canada and other places, you still have some other things. Some of these things are actually available. The broccoli, uh, the lettuce, they are available in Nigeria, but they are not common food that we eat more often. So it's important to include this diet daily in your, in your food, whether as a meal or combined with other uh, food so that you can actually protect your eyes and get some enrichment. We we'll also have some of these high healthy um, antioxidants uh, combined in pill forms. Um, this was found in some studies. Um, so if you want, you could buy those tablets, but it's important that this um, uh, tablets are not abused because some of these antioxidants, when it is excessive, they can create problem in the body for the liver, uh, in the blood and create problem generally for the people. So on a final note, it's important that everybody have an eye exam yearly. If you have not done an eye exam um, this year or for a while, it's good for you to go for a check you can have a baseline, you can know what is happening. And then you can change your lifestyle. I talked about some of those things along the way. And early signs of vision is also important to know what happens in your family, whether people have had um, any eye problems before, so you can seek help on time. Thank you. So I can give them for more questions. Yes, Ori, over to you. Ah, thank you so much, um, Femi. Um, I've been writing, you know, I've been jotting down a few things and I want to believe that many of us have been doing the same. Please let's give a shout out to um, Dr. Femi Ibrahim. You can do that um, in the chat box. Let's appreciate him for sharing out of his wealth of knowledge on how we can pay attention to our vision so that we can um, age proof, age proof our vision, age proof <laughs> our vision. That, that's quite interesting. So thank you so much. I, I really gained a lot from um, what you shared and I expect that a lot of us will have questions. Let me go to the chat box. Okay, someone is saying thanks a lot for this wonderful education. Thanks for sharing, I appreciate your time. Congratulations, doctor. This is Henry from Kenya. Thank you so much. So do we have any questions? Um, I remember that um, I got some questions which I forwarded to you. I, I, what, what, did you see those questions, Femi? The questions I got from some of the people that registered. Share them again. again. No, no, okay, please. So just, just I, will, I will read those ones read out. out. Okay, so okay. we have more messages coming in. Thank you so much. If you haven't introduced yourself, please, um, we want to welcome you again. And we would appreciate it if you can just introduce yourself in the chat box by name and by region, just to let us know um, where you are from. And so I'm going to go ahead and read the other questions in the that were sent to us before the webinar. Okay. And um, please, if, if you have any questions, let's begin to, to type them in. I have a question about eye exercises. You mentioned eye exercises as being one of the tips for good eye health. Is that just um, the 2020 rule or there are other things that we can do? So that's the question I have. Um, maybe you could go ahead with that while I get the other questions. Okay, yeah, the 2020 rule is important, that's one. But also you can look up, down, sideways, look at things far. And yeah, sometimes people, uh, my video is on. Yes, you can look at an object, move it further away, move it close to yourself so you can help with your accommodation and other things like that. If people have misalignment, actually, sometimes they need to see the orthoptist who teaches them some exercise to correct things. but. Looking, using this also helps to move your eyes for convergence and divergence. Yes. Okay. So how often do we need to do that? 
Is it um is it every 20 minutes? I know we tend to look around us, but I think where people have most problems is when they have to be on a device on their phone or on the TV for long hours and they don't remember to look away. So but I think at other times we are most likely, you know, moving up and down. So I, I think the area where we really need to make adjustments is with the devices that we make use of on a daily basis. Yeah, so with the devices, even sometimes, you know, like this Zoom meeting is already into 30 minutes. Sometimes you could stand up, move away, okay, or move the devices uh, and look up. And for 20 seconds, you can count one to 20 slowly because you don't need to look at your time. You can count one to 20 slowly. That will give you 20 seconds. And then sometimes you need to walk away and then come back or still listening as you go on with the meeting. Though most online meetings and classes, you need to pay a lot of attention, but um, it's important also, if you are using the screen for a long time, that you might put filter on your screen, or if you don't need glasses, sometimes for people that do a lot of um, work on the system, IT people, software developers, you might need to have to get, get anti-reflective spectacle, which reflects the rays of light that comes from the devices and therefore protect your eyes from having problems. There has been a lot of um, research that has been done on the uh, putting blue filter into the spectacles to protect the eyes. Sometimes if you look at new phones now, there's these blue filters that is there you can activate when you're using your devices that can also give you um, uh, some protection even from your devices. It's been incorporated in new devices that are being uh, coming out now. Um, in yes. the market. Yes, yes. I've seen a blue light filter on my phone before. And I know that um, we have some of these rings I can drip over the, um, the laptop or computer to reduce the reflection and the rays. Okay, so the questions that I had before the webinar, one is I'm short-sighted. How can I improve my sight? Um, is there any way that um, our lifestyle behavior can impact on short-sightedness or long-sightedness? I thought that was more of, a, more of a, a genetic issue, but maybe you can expand on that. Uh, there is a similar question like that to what can I do to improve my sight? Okay, so um, for short-sightedness, once um, somebody has developed it, um, it's okay. So what causes short sightedness is when the eye has grown too long or the curvature, whether the cornea or the lens is too curved. So the rays of light falls behind the retina. So the image the individual see is blocked because it's not on the retina. Normally the images are supposed to fall on the retina directly. Now, when somebody already, already have short sightedness, uh, medically, there's nothing to prevent it's already happened. So the person needs an aid to be able to see clearly. What can be done or um, treatment that can be given, but this or common in children to reduce progression. Because in children, when it happens, it can progress and get worse, that the power will have to increase with time. And uh, so my advice to such an individual is use the, the, the spectacle or whatever treatment your specialist is giving you and comply with care. And also ensure that your lighting, because a lot of times people that are short-sighted use poor lighting, okay? That your lighting is appropriate for you to see clearly. Now, presently we have a pandemic. So the word pandemic is, <laughs> is running around in the society. We have a pandemic of myopia worldwide, mm. okay? And this is affecting children more. This is a big problem in Asia presently and is coming up in Africa now. And this is because children are doing a lot of near work. Like you can bear with me, children goes to school, stay in school for almost six to eight hours. They do a lot of reading. They come home, they have assignments they will do before they go to bed. Um, and then over the weekend, they have assignments to do. It's not been found out that the sun actually is protective against myopia in children. Wow that it's important that a child should play at least 30 minutes to one hour daily in the sunlight outside. 
And you know, like what's happening in Nigeria, most parents put their children indoors. Their children are not allowed outdoors. There's a lot of reasons, kidnappers, a lot of fears, what happens and where the environment you live. So, but school environment is important. So your child should be in a school environment where they have, when they have breaks, their breaks are not in the classroom. It must be outside in the playpen where they play with where the sun is. You understand and this has been found to be protective. This is a large studies that have been done in China. Um, and if such children are picked early, we could use some eye drops to reduce the progression not actually to reduce the progression. They will still need to be spectacle because things will get worse for the children. And I would advise uh, parents that are listening or uncles and aunties that are listening, we need to reduce the device time that the children use because when children do a lot of near work, it predisposes them to developing myopia. And you'll see a lot of children in schools now using spectacles and their parents are like, where did you get it? Yes, there's a genetic component to myopia, but a lot of times it is environmental factors and lifestyle behaviors that predispose people to this. Thank you. Okay. That, that, that's um, very, very insightful. You know, I've always been aware about the importance of sunlight for our bone health, you know, because of the absorption of vitamin D. And that's one of the things I've been, you know, talking about people getting in the sunlight so that they can have enough of um, ultraviolet rays, which are supposed to help us produce vitamin D. But this is also very significant. Um, our children developing short-sightedness myopia because they don't have enough exposures to sunlight. I think that's something that all of us should take home today because many of our children, they stay indoors. You know, unlike in our days when we used to run around, you know, in the grass, climb yeah. trees, pluck all sorts of fruits from trees. We find our children now um, in front of video games and movies and all that. And if they're not doing that, they are busy doing homework. So there's a lot of pressure you know, out there to succeed and to go beyond you know, everybody else. But at, at, as we're doing that, it's actually having a conflict you know, with our healthcare. Okay, so I'm, the other question that I have here before I read the ones on the call, um, what could be the cause of an eye blur? When reading books at close range, I feel a blur. But when there's a distance, it's clearer. And there's another question, at what time can someone stop using glasses? I think that's a good question. I remember that uh, my dad wore glasses you know, for a while when I was a child and all of a sudden he stopped wearing it. And then I asked him and he said his short-sightedness short -sightedness had been corrected. Of course, when he got older, you know, he started wearing glasses again, probably for another reason. But is there a certain time that, you know, we can stop using glasses maybe because the um, eye defect or maybe the refractive error has been corrected? Okay. Uh, okay. Anyway, for your dad, it's it's um, you know you saw me laughing. <laughs> anyway, for your dad, it's possible he was short sighted. You, actually, when people are short sighted, when they have um, a form of cataract, which is nuclear sclerosis, their vision becomes better and they drop their glasses, and then somehow. They might need the glasses again when things get worse. But anyway, please, you should go for a check uh, for his eyes. Um, so when people talk about glasses, um, there are many scenarios of things that could happen. A lot of times when people are short-sighted and they are using glasses, it is unlikely they will drop the glasses because the, like I said, the eye might have grown too long and the eye cannot shrink back or the curvature is too steep, okay? And that results in that. But in children, this can change, especially those that are hypermetropic. Usually when a child is born, a child is hypermetropic, okay? But um, as the uh, eye grows, as the eye, the eye of the child grows, the child can become normal, emetropic. 
as the child grows and everything becomes normal. But if it is high, because the child might develop a squint, the spectacle might be given. And as the eye grows, the child might drop the glasses. So that can also happen. Now, the person that mentioned about um, seeing things that is near blood, things that is far clear, might likely have long sightedness. They have, they can see what is happening very well. What is close to them is a big problem. The person needs to go for an eye check. It might be age related. It might be the person also has changed occupation. Usually when people are 35 and above, they start doing masters and PhD. They just notice, ah, I cannot read, I cannot read. It could have been there, but because now there's more intensive reading because of the course they are doing or the training they went for, that makes them to realize they need more demand on their vision. And then it becomes more obvious to them. So all this can happen and can be what is the uh, challenge that is occurring in such an individual. Okay, thank you so much for that. Did you notice me looking away from, from the device just now? <laughs> I was trying to count, but I couldn't count 20 seconds, uh, but I'm trying to do that. And I noticed that you're doing that as well. Okay, so yeah. that should be a habit for every one of us. Um, so uh, we have some more people online. Um, Stephen from UK, Rolake Rufus, thank you for being here. Um, I, we have a question. We have many Forex traders here, and this implies that they look at screens constantly, pieces and phones. How can we protect our eyes in this situation? I want to believe that we've given some tips on this. Is there anything else you want to add? You know, some people that, that is just their work. That is their daily bread. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so they should put a screen filter on their screen or rather they should go for a check for their eyes to see if there's any, any, any form of refractive error. If there's none, they can get anti-reflective spectacle which will protect them from the rays of light from the computer. And but anyway, they still need to take some time off the device. Okay, that is very important because the more you open your eyes and you don't blink, there's dryness of the cornea. You will have foreign body sensation, redness, irritability, sometimes headaches. And some people they have, some people that complain of migraine headaches is a result of all this problem. And once they just protect themselves uh, with the computer and also with the anti-reflective glasses, things become much better. Yeah, thank you. Next one. Hello. Hello, Ori. Yes, I'm through with the answer. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. I, I believe that has helped. So um, let me see the next question. I have seen, welcome Josephine, Josephine from Lagos. I've seen some glasses, the manufacturers called computer glasses that protect against blue light and glare from the screens of computers and smartphones. I want to ask if these blue lights are protective, if these blue lights Protective glasses are useful and effective. Okay, so just be sure, yes, I've mentioned about blue filters on the phone. Um, so if um, you have such glasses, it's important you see a specialist, first of all, check and be sure you don't have any refractive error because sometimes people have, it's not that people are short-sighted or long-sighted. They have different curvatures of the cornea and so they have what you call astigmatism. So the people squint their eyes, like, let me just demonstrate that. They do like this to see things clearly because it's not sharp. So if that happens, it's important to, you might still need some little correction. And then with the blue filter, you are protected much better, especially like the forest trader and other people that use this computer a lot. So yes, they are good. But it's important you see a specialist, check your eyes, and then you can get them. And that it will it will help you a lot. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, thank up. you very much for that. Um, hello, yeah. Leo from um, Kampala, Uganda. Great to have you. Quadri Tony from Lagos, thank you for coming. So another question here, we've heard about foods which are good for the eyes. Are there any foods that are bad for eyesight? Uh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> yes, yes, there are some, um, especially foods that are high in cholesterol. So uh, margarine, fried food, uh, cookies, cakes, crackers, and sweetened drinks. All these, if taken in excessiveness, can increase the cholesterol and can affect great problem for the eye um, and or lead to some inflammation. Those are the ones that are um, there. For those that take a lot of junky food or junk food, which definitely affect other parts of the body, maybe because they result in obesity and this obesity, like in the slides I've shown, predisposed to all these other eye diseases. So they can create problems for the eye. Okay. All right. Um, what are the signs and symptoms to be worried about at early stages? Early stages of what exactly? I think we need more clarity on that. Early stages of what in particular? Because there, there are so many eye issues. So you want to, um, um, Henry, do you want yes. to elaborate more on your question? While we go to the next one, we can come back to this. Does a low amount of sleep have effect on the eyes? Sleep deprivation. Does it hurt? Yeah, the eyes? I'm sure. It, this this will yes, this have effects on the eye. A lot of times when you have sleep deprivation, when the person wakes up, the eyelids are droopy. You know, the eye could be red. Usually, when you don't have enough sleep, this affects the blood pressure, and there is a relationship between intraocular pressure and the blood supply to the optic nerve. So, when the person doesn't sleep well, his blood pressure may not be regulated well, and this might affect the perfusion of the optic nerve. And if this is reduced, the person can lose vision gradually. So it does, like it, it happens. Also, for people that have short neck or obese, especially when they are predisposed to glaucoma, this can, and people that have obstructive sleep apnea, this can result in poor vision as a result of perfusion to the optic nerve because if this is reduced and it compromises uh, blood supply to the optic nerve and that can result in poor vision. Um, so we've had a lot of people that when they sleep and wake up, they notice their vision has dropped. Okay, and one emphasis I need to make, um, it's also for people that are predisposed, especially those that have glaucoma, it's important if they have hypertension and we always advise hypertensive patients it's always advisable they don't use antihypertensive when they are going to sleep. They can use it in the evening, six, seven, eight latest. But when they are using it late, when they are going to sleep, they can compromise the blood supply to the optic nerve and the vision can be lost. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Abimbala's hand has been raised for a while. You want to unmute yourself and say something? Hello? Okay. Or oh, you want to type it in? Let me see. Okay, I was, uh, I was able to unmute myself now. Okay, so when it comes to age-related, uh, well, because before now, I never had to use glasses to, to read anything, but I find that as soon as I got to my 40s, I've had to get uh, reading glasses. Is that something that I did wrong or just aging? Okay. okay. Um, I don't think it's anything you've done wrong. Um, it's more of age related. Um, when people are 35 and above, um, they are more at risk of what we call presbyopia. We call it presbyopia. The part of the eye that is normally elastic when people are younger becomes less elastic as people get older. As it is also as a result of aging. Uh, that's the lens. So people cannot accommodate like they normally do before. So they find small things that are close, difficult to read. And so you need 
um, uh, a pair of lenses or if you do um, uh, laser surgery to change the curvature of the cornea or maybe they can remove the lens of your eyes. But these airways give you a pair of glasses rather than do surgeries. Um, and that will help. But as you get older, as your age increases, the power also will increase, okay? And there's nothing that has been found to change this aging process that occur in the eye. Uh, so you might just need to slip on the glasses when you need to read um, those, those things. And it's really um, important to have it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. I, I wanted to comment that, you know, this issue of sleep deprivation, I discovered that it has a, a very wide or far reaching impact on our health. You know, there are studies that show that people that don't sleep enough are more prone to um, glucose intolerance, weight gain, and type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, yeah. once you develop diabetes too, there's a risk of diabetic retinopathy, as well as many other pathies, you know, that have to do with your nephropathy, you know, and all that. So I, I, sleep is one thing that people need to take seriously. I, I know how I feel if I haven't, you know, slept enough and I wake up, you know, in the morning, I know how I get headaches and eye pain. A lot of people take all those things for granted, but I, I think this is a wake up call for some of us. You know, we need to take our sleep more seriously. I have um, an interesting question here. Good evening, sir. This is from Dr. Moto Shadiemi. Welcome. Um, thank you for your presentation. Does beta cola help with vision? And what are the benefits of facial steaming to the eyes? That's ac acuity. Is it that it helps in visual acuity or it helps in clarity? That's an interesting question. <laughs> okay. So um, um, quite some research or studies have been done with beta cola, especially as it relates with glaucoma. Um, there was an observation by some specialists that patients that eat a lot of um, beta cola, they observed that the pressure in their eye is better controlled compared with people that don't. They were use, all using medication, but those ones are better controlled. And I, I remember one of the professor in Luth did a study to find the active agent in the beta cola that actually results in this. And they found that really, it can help to reduce the um, intraocular pressure in the eye, in those group of people. The issue now is how much to consume. Um, and actually the person was working on making it into an eye drop so that it can work better in the eye. Uh, so it has been documented that it can help to reduce the intraocular pressure. However, the amount to eat as, as far chewing the bitter cola and all this is not really, have not really been specified, okay? So uh, it can help as an adjunct, okay? In such a case, but not as a primary treatment. But the person should be aware that side effect of beta cola it can increase blood pressure. It can also cause insomnia. And if this happens, this can worsen eye conditions and can cause tremors in some cases. So it's important to be cautious in the use um, of this. Now, facial steaming will not may improve your visual acuity, may. But really what facial steaming would do is it will help to reduce the fat that are in the lid. It doesn't really affect the vision itself. So people that have dry eyes, when they do facial steaming, there's more lubrication in their eyes. They feel more comfortable. Like what happens is in vision, the tear film is very, very important. If there is problem with the tear film, there is dryness of the cornea, the cornea will not be able to reflect light properly into the eye. And this will affect the quality of light, the quality of image that is formed on the retina. So it will help with the, um, with the leads and with the tear film, which might help the person to, for that moment, it might be a few minutes, the vision might appear clearer, then it becomes blood again. Okay, so it can help with the leads. Um, but for visual acuity, it's transient. It's not a permanent thing. It's anyway good. Some people have a lot of um, lead diseases 
calisium. Sometimes you see people with swelling that is not painful. We have a lot of meibomian gland disease in our environment. And facial steaming will help to clear the pores of the meibomian gland uh, because it produces a significant part from the tear film. And this will help to uh, make the person better relieved and uh, therefore might see clearly at such a period. Mm. Th thank you for um, clarifying that. I, I think over here generally um, in Nigeria, a lot of people, once they hear that something might be beneficial, they want to use it to replace treatment. You know, for example, um, some studies show that people, when you take coffee, it can help people that take coffee, they have reduced um, blood glucose levels. You know, but if for any reason that person has developed diabetes, drinking coffee is not going to be the solution. So I think in a similar way, um, th there are some more pointed things that one needs to do. For example, now to prevent diabetes, one has to uh, maintain a healthy weight, one has to sleep adequately and have a healthy diet and all of that. So it's good to focus on those healthy lifestyle habits than to say, oh, let me drink coffee all the time so that my blood sugar will be corrected. If you are not doing all the other things uh, rightly, making healthy choices and you're drinking coffee, uh, that does not mean that you're going to control your blood sugar in the same way, because I'm just trying to refer to this question. You know, some people might want to leave from here and say, okay, I'm going to be eating beta, beta cola now. Since they say beta cola can help the <laughs> eyesight. So um, we, there, we have it, to balance it, things. It, 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 you it know, I believe that the uh, intraocular pressure. It's, it's, it reduces the intraocular pressure. That's yes. in people predisposed to glaucoma. Yes. So do you advise that we now eat beta cola every day to maintain a lower intra? So that, that's what I'm trying to risk. If you are not at risk, you don't need to. Okay, but for okay. someone who is at risk, because also it's it, it, it is a stimulant and could be addictive. Okay. That's the other side of it. It's a stimulant and it could be addictive. I think and it contains it caffeine as well. Does it contain caffeine it contains, as well? I think okay. it will have some amount of caffeine also in it. So it's better you don't especially when things becomes addictive. Like I mentioned, moderate alcohol drinking is good for the eyes, but it can be addictive. So. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might not be able to strike a balance when something becomes addictive in being able to control yourself. So if you have not started, it's better don't start. Okay. Because, because things are out of want to moderation. Know. Yeah, if things are out of moderation, it creates more harm. For example, um, eating nuts is good for the eye. It helps to reduce cholesterol in the body. But when you eat too much of the nuts, granuts, walnut, almond nut, you increase your calorie and you will gain weight. Yes. And that will create more problem for you on the long run, on the long run. So everything is in moderation. If it is helpful or beneficial, you have to do it in moderation. In moderation. Yes, you are very right about the nuts. In fact, we, we recommend um, two to three handfuls of nuts oh, okay. a week. Whereas some people will take a whole <laughs> bottle and finish it at a sitting and they end up with constipation and incomplete bowel emptying and sit yeah, on the loo yeah. for a long time and develop hemorrhoids, piles and fissures and all that. So, well, we, we just have to strike a balance. It's not a good, they're healthy, they're good for the eye, but we shouldn't overdo it. And please, if you have not been taking um, bitter cola before now, don't go and start eating it because of what you've heard tonight. You know, there are some of these things, studies have been carried out for several reasons, but if you don't have any risk, don't just go and start eating bitter cola because of what we've heard tonight. Okay, so I have another question um, from Mrs. Ronke, Grace Ronke Adegoke. You're welcome, Ma. She's um, one of our board of trustees in Lifestyle Champions International. We're so happy to have you here. Okay, so this question is actually from Dr. Abel Adegoke. Okay, I can see you waving, Ma. Great to see you. Hello, sir. You're welcome. So there's a question here from them. Is there a program of diabetic eye screening in Nigeria? How can this be organized if not? Uh, this is um, 
and her no, key no problem. Down it's an area of my interest. Okay. It's an area of my interest, and I've done some presentation on this. And okay. um, presently, there's no routine program of screening that is um, rolled out by the government. Um, the uh, Vitro Retina Society of Nigeria, which is a subspecialty in Ophthalmological Society of Nigeria, which I'm also a part of, has been advocating with the Ministry of Health, especially the National High Health uh, Program, to develop a program for screening. What happens presently is incidental screening. The ideal thing is anybody diagnosed with diabetes is supposed to be referred to the eye clinic to be checked, to know the baseline uh, uh, level of if there's any problem in the eye, and then if things need to be taken further. Uh, so different hospitals have different programs for their communities, but as for the government, nothing like this um, is ongoing presently. Uh, it's a big burden for the ophthalmologists and a big concern for us because the I think the percentage of diabetes in mellitus in Nigeria is about 5%, if not more now. I'm talking of 20, maybe 2018. It's my, but it's on the increase. And we know that a lot of people are going to come down with retinopathy. It's just a matter of time. Uh, but um, I will take this up with my other colleagues. Um, there's a conference we're having in August and we'll discuss this further. But you know, there has to be a national policy to push things so that it is readily available to people in the rural areas where this disease is a big burden than in the urban areas because most of the eye clinics are in the urban areas. But um, one thing that we're advocating is that um, collaborating with family physicians, um, other physicians is that if they have any diabetic patient, they should refer immediately and let them know wait until they have poor vision or any eye complaint because it might be too late. And, and it's a lot expensive to manage the complications from diabetes and it can cause irreversible blindness if not picked on time. Uh, thank you for that question, Mon. So uh, the organization, it's good if there's a policy nationally, it makes it easier to put pressure on the, on the state and local government to initiate the screening program. Uh, but presently it is being done by associations and by clinics and hospitals, especially in collaboration with the physicians to screen the patients they have. Uh, this is not effective because it is just incidental findings or when there are problems. And it, most of the time it's too late. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So we, we need some of our colleagues to be able to table this to the government, you know, yeah. so that we can get a national policy on, you know, screening for eye screening for diabetic patients. I, I think this is very key. Okay, um, thank you so much, um, Dr. Abel Adegoke. He's a chairman of the board of trustees for LCI. And we're grateful that you're here tonight, sir. Another question, is palm wine okay for the eyes and in what quantity? <laughs> Okay, that's a very good question. <laughs> anyway, um, palm wine um, has been found to have a high content of vitamin A, which could be good, which is good. That's what you find in carrot and could be good for the eye. Now, quantity, it's difficult because there's no randomized study to find what is the concentration of this in the palm wine, okay, to do that. And the other caveat is that palm wine could be addictive. So if you want to take a small quantity, fine, good. Um, it could be good for your eyes, but you need to watch the addictiveness. That's on that aspect, which you need to, um, it's, it also gives you alcohol to an extent, it's really the fermented one, which is what I'm sure Ron Rolake is talking about not the freshly halved palm wine. <laughs> uh, this gives you a moderate uh, drinking and increase the HDL, which is also good. It reduces the risk of having emboli on thrombus formation, getting to the arterials or the high that will create problem. 
um, for the person, but it's more of the vitamin A that it can give as an advantage. So I, I would like to say that there are some more healthier uh, versions of um, vitamin A. You know, if you're, if yeah. you're, what you're looking <laughs> for is vitamin A to better your eyesight, then get carrots, get leaf green, dark yeah. leafy, uh, green vegetables. Okay, sorry. Uh, I should point out the active thing in palm oil is actually the yeast. You know, people always talk of taking yeast tablet. Is it palm? Is it palm wine or palm oil? Which one? Palm wine. Palm wine. Palm wine. Palm wine. Okay. Is the yeast, okay. and the yeast helps in uh, facilitating generation of vitamin A. Okay, okay, that's what is in the palm wine. That's the advantage. You know, as we're growing up, a lot of people say, "Take yeast when you have any eye problem. You can buy yeast tablets and swallow yeast tablets to see better." And things like that. Even some of the okay. natural medicine guys mix yeast tablets with their medication and say this is for the eye. Likely there's a yeast tablet that is inside okay. it and it generates vitamin A on the long run. But the vitamin A helps in transmission of um, information between the rhodopsin, the, the rods and the cones. Okay, that's what they help. And so they can make transmission of light better and faster. Okay. okay, so that's just what what they do. Okay, and um, Mrs. Yeah. Um, Adegoke is also saying palm oil is also one of the richest sources of carotenoids. That's true. That's true, but it must not be. Um, I don't know how to say it in English, but she she important You understand? When you buy apple, you lose that. You break down. You lose that carotenoid. That's but when we most, fry it, when we fry the palm oil. Yes, yes. You know, we yes, lose yes, yes. that um you lose that ingredient. Okay. Most people when they use palm oil, they use it with the cooking overall. The Yoruba people will allow the frying before they start using the palm oil. So in the process of frying, you lose that. Oh, we and have um, the word here, bleach. <laughs> but, ah, okay, yeah, maybe that's it. So that maybe that's a better word. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my message got across better. <laughs> yes. So sorry for those that don't speak Yoruba. Um, but the other thing that happens is when you bleach it, you change the polyunsaturated fat oil to monosaturated, which is not good for your body. Okay. Which now creates problem on the long run if you eat it a lot and increase cholesterol and create other problems. But when you eat it, you as you pour it you had all the whatever you want to use and cook everything together, you save, you save that. And it might even be better to eat it like you, when we eat cooked yam with palm oil. It's mm. more better than, uh, it's more, you get all the nutrients out of it. Exactly. And you know, in those days, when we, when we had hot um, yam, when we make hot yam, we just put, you know, that thick part of the palm oil on it and allow mm. it to melt on it before eating. Mm. <laughs> You mean it? I can see. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much, um, Dr. Femi. Before we go, <clears throat> could you just quickly share that slide with us again that shows the different um, the the food classes or the types of food that um, are good for the eye? I think there was a slide like that. Can you just quickly show it before you leave? So we, we have people clapping for you and um, expressing thanks for this lecture or this presentation. Okay. Yes, so a eye healthy diet. I, I just want all of us to take note of this. You know, the different eye healthy um, foods where you can find lutein, zean, xanthine, um, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin A, C, E, and zinc. So now, I know some people will have questions here. For example, now zinc, red meat. You can find zinc in red meat. Someone like me, I've more or less gone off red meat. For, uh, maybe because of my mindset, I don't even enjoy taking red meat anymore. Even if I try, when I try mm -hmm. chewing it, I don't feel good about yeah. it and it tastes uh, funny in my mouth. So I hardly, I don't take meat anymore. Yeah, sometimes I take chicken, but um, I stick with fish mostly. 
So, but I believe that we can get zinc in other things. You don't have to take red meat for you to get your zinc. So you have egg, you have yogurt. I've taken yogurt today. Soya beans, oysters, chickpeas. So, the, well, I'm not sure we have chickpeas around here. I see them a lot in the market. It's just that many of us, are, we don't look out for, for them. But when yeah, I go into the shops, I see them. It yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I see them, but maybe people don't explore those kind of, of meals. So it would be good to take a snapshot of this and um, maybe we'll find a way of also getting back to us in our meals for us mm -hmm. to um, remember these different classes of foods, fruits, um, vegetables. I, I think this is more of a plant-based diet that we can see. So if we are really taking our fruits very well, carrots, mangoes, um, spinach, pawpaw, orange, corn, I think we are good to go. Walnuts, sardines, um, sweet potatoes, red peppers, <laughs> raw, raw red peppers. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> when you cook it, you might lose those nutrients. I hope it is not rodo. <laughs> yeah, okay, but you, you, know, you can slice it small. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just okay. slice small with your rice and eat it with it. Okay, okay. Tomatoes. But thoroughly washed anyway before you do that so you don't take some other germs. Okay. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate. Okay, um, Mrs. Modupe Aguda is saying bell peppers. You know, we have these bell peppers that we use for our fried rice and salads. I think those ones are less peppery. Are, are those ones also protective? I believe so. Yes, they are. They're in the same okay. group. Okay. So a lot of research are not American-based. Most of the foods are found here too in Africa. Yes, many of these foods are found in Africa. You know, we only need to explore what we have in the markets. And we can even plant some of these things as well. So um, I think this is a good place to call it a day. Um, I want to thank everyone for staying on till the end. Um, thank you so much to Bishop Prey for hosting us. Um, that's um, Mr. Femi Raji, um, Bimbo, thanks for being here again. And thanks for speaking to us during the boost, the last Boost Your Confidence session. Thank you for sharing, sharing your story. For those of us who want to hear a Bimbola story, you can go to our um, Lifestyle Champions YouTube channel to listen to her as she shared her story of weight loss, how she went from, was it 90? five kg to 72 kg, very interesting story and very inspiring as well. Um, Dr. D Dabota, thank you for being here. Dan Juma, um, David Vidic, D Davidic. Dr. Henry, you were raising your hand earlier. Do you want to say something? Yes, the channel name is um, Lifestyle Champions International. We're going to share, I'll share that in the chat box. Dr. Kende Makinde, my husband, and also a member of the Board of Trustees. Dr. Motosho, um, Mrs. Grace Runke Adeguke, like I said, um, introduced earlier, and then Dr. Ibel Adeguke. Dr. Ibiemi, thank you for being here. <clears throat> um, Faith Jayola, Jay Josephine, thank you for being here. Um, Mrs. Modupe Aguda, one of my um, senior friends and leaders in the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. Thank you for being here, Ma. Moji Aino Badejo, um, Mrs. Um, Raji Moini, um, Dr. Nanklin, Nick Orekola Day, Oyebinkwe, Rolake, Ruth Odiana, oh, um, my screen is uh, going back and forth. Um, um, Shola Bomi, 
Okay, I think I'm moving my screen a bit too fast. Leo, Nick, Line, came uh, from all the way from Kenya. Rolake, Steven Adedewe. Okay. Um, All right, I hope I didn't miss out anybody. My, my it keep, keeps going back up after I scroll down. Uh, I really want to appreciate everyone for being patient, for being here tonight. Um, and I want to remind you that you look away from your screen. I tried to do that several times during this presentation to look away from your screen every 20 minutes for at least 20 seconds to a distance of about 20 feet from where you are. So you are looking away um, from your screen and that will help you to maintain um, accommodation so that um, your, your eyes, the muscles in your eyes can be freer and you can even engage in eye exercises from time to time, looking up, looking down, looking sideways, you know, yeah, exercising the, the different muscles in your eye when you do that. Um, so uh, another thing is remember to wear your sunglasses. I think all of us should go and buy sunglasses. And when you're out in the sun, please wear the sunglasses on a, on a sunny day. If you haven't had an eye check in recent times, please go and see the optometrist or the ophthalmologist, do an eye check, find out if you have a risk or predisposition for glaucoma or any other eye um, disease and age-proof your vision by maintaining a healthy weight, by avoiding smoking, by um, eating a healthy diet full of antioxidants like vitamin A, E, lutein, zinc, and copper. And remember that for our children, sunlight is protective against myopia. So their breaks must be outside where the sun is. They shouldn't just stay cooped up in class all day long. Um, remember, you can get a screen filter on your screen if you have to be on your laptop throughout the day, but you must remember to take time off the device no matter what. Get anti-reflective spectacles as well. Um, if you don't have any eye defect, but if you have an eye defect or refractive error, your doctor or your ophthalmologist might need to recommend something specific for you, but something that has um, a photochromic lens. I think I, I tried, you know, I was really jutting when you were, <laughs> when you were speaking. Yeah, okay. you did. So we can prevent dryness of the eyes, headaches, and so many other problems that we encounter from staying for long periods on our laptops, uh, our phones and the, and the TV. So thank you so much for staying with us. If you want um, to get updates from us, from Lifestyle Champions International, quickly leave your email in, in the chat box before we close. Oh, Modupe Ajibao, thank you for being here. You're welcome. So please just um, leave in your email and um, we'll get back to you with more information. I was going to type in Lifestyle Champions um, um, channel. Let me quickly do that. The YouTube channel. Oops. <coughs> Yeah, so once you just type in Lifestyle Champions International on YouTube, you you see you see our, <clears throat> our channel come up and you can see some of our videos. And you can also read our blog at ww.lifestylechamps dot com all right so um as we leave now you can um, unmute yourself to, to say bye so we can hear your voice <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, bye, Dr. Henry. Thank you for coming. We look forward to seeing you in our next webinar. Or event. Bye. Bye, everyone.